Wilde's resident veterinary surgeon, Ian Robertson, right now is in the Malaysian island state of Borneo in search of the world's smallest bear. This is the world's smallest bear, but here in the rainforests of Borneo, this little guy has a very big and very dangerous reputation. Meet the sun bear, appropriately named for the bright crescent-shaped patch on its chest. Measuring under 60 inches and weighing less than 150 pounds, this bear may be small, but don't worry, he can take care of himself. Check out those long, pointed claws. Now that's how you climb a tree. The sun bear is a national treasure, but very little is known about them because they're hard to find. That's where people like Su Te Wong, or Wong as he prefers us to call him, comes in. Wong is among the first to actually study the sun bear. Of particular importance is the fact that the rainforest, which is the sun bear's natural habitat, is being logged. Now, how is this affecting them? We don't know, but we need to find out before we lose them forever. I'm Ian Robertson, a veterinarian from New Zealand, and today I'm joining Wong on a challenging trek into the Dunham Valley Reserve, a very dense rainforest located in the Malaysian state of Sabah on the island of Borneo. Our mission today, to study the ecology of the little known sun bear. Our methods, setting traps, following tracks, and using a couple of high-tech devices that may surprise you. This is definitely going to be an adventure. Trapping is one method Wong uses to study sun bears up close, but it's more common to find other visitors inside. We have a Malay civet. We have a what? A Malay civet. Civets. Civets might look like long-nosed cats, but they're actually classified in the same family as the mongoose. Pretty cute, but that's no sun bear. Hey. There, we there we go. Where the animal grab the bait, it will pull this iron bar and then let go the door. Bait is also hung in nearby trees to attract the bears. Although they love honey, this isn't actually honey, this is chicken guts, which the bears supposedly love too. I'm very pleased you're a scientist, not a cook here. I'm a good cook as well. I shouldn't be giving him a cheek, he's got a machete in his hand. But in 800 attempts, Wong has only captured three bears. That's right, three. These strong little bears are literally able to claw their way out of Wong's traps. Wong, what's this? Actually, this trap caught a bear before and the bear rip a hole on this metal trap okay. and the bear escaped. That gives you some idea how strong this bear is, doesn't it? Ripped its way through the side of the tank. Yes, exactly. It is a solid metal trap. And we're going to look for this guy. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, Wong took pictures of what happened at those rare events and here's what happened last time. After temporarily sedating the sun bear with a needle, Wong discovered eight gunshot wounds on the bear's back. No doubt the work of poachers who can sell sun bear parts for a lot of money to make traditional Chinese medicines. It's a miracle this guy survived. Wong collects his tissue samples and size measurements from each bear. He then attaches both a radio collar and an ear tank. This data will answer the questions, what do they eat? Where do they prefer to live? What are their reproduction habits? And much more. The point? We want to keep these guys around as they play an important role in seed dispersal, which helps the rainforest grow. And, being at the top of the food chain, they also help maintain the ecological balance in the forest. We're heading above the rainforest now to get our bearings. And why have you chosen this place to study something? This particular area has a large chunk of pristine primary forest and also the log forest. Besides checking out this spectacular view, we're also here to track one of the three bears Wong has radio collared. More strong here. Yeah. So what does this tell us? Tell us that the bear is at that direction. Mm -hmm. Southeast. Southeast. Two kilometers. 
Yes. We got a little hype ahead of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Following the sound of the strongest beat, which is giving us the direction of the bear. And I'm still whispering because in spite of all of us here, we're trying to do it quietly because obviously if the bear hears us coming, chances are he's just going to take off the other direction. Very fresh and bear feeding site. When you're talking about fresh, how fresh? Less than half a day. Ooh. Up ahead, more clues. This nearby tree shows plenty of fresh sunbear claw marks. Their nails are about two inches long, very, very sharp at the end, so they can dig in and make these little trenches in the trunk of the tree. And there's no hair or anything on the paws, so there's no chances of slipping and sliding as they go up. Or as they come down. Borneo locals claim that cornered sun bears have attacked people. So before we get any closer, I ask Wong's advice in case we run into trouble. The worst thing if they charge is to fight back. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I won't be doing that. Um, don't run. You don't run? Yes. Glad I asked. <laughs> I was just getting ready to run. <laughs> Does this get frustrating for you sometimes? Yes, sometimes I spend days in the forest, but no bears, no data, and you just have to live with it. Well, Ian, here to do this, but I have to tell you, the bear is getting away. This is a picture of a silent screen. <laughs> but it was not lost. We got one more card up our sleeve to play. There he is, the elusive sun bear in person. But we had to change locations to actually see him. We're now in Sepalok Orang Reserve in Sabah, face to face with the former pet sun bear now in captivity. And watching this guy in action, it's easy to see why Wong works so hard. But captive bears like this one, kept as pets and in zoos, can't fill the crucial role that wild bears have in the rainforest as seed dispersers and predators. And sadly, poachers continue to hunt them and kill them. Today we can still see bears growing wild, but if one day we don't have the chance to see it, it's a shame. I tell you what, after all those hours wandering through the jungle looking for this guy, it's wonderful to finally be right here, not only seeing him, but touching him. I'm Ian Robertson, thrilled to finally see a sun bear for World Gone Wild. Coming up on World Gone Wild at the...